Tonight I have a confession to make. I hate science videos on YouTube. Perhaps you know the feeling too. Sometimes I'm browsing videos and I see a sexy thumbnail, a cool title, maybe even a nice drawing, and I think, yeah, okay, maybe I do want to learn a bit about black holes. So I click the video. But after 40 seconds or so, I start skipping ahead. I was expecting something beautiful, something amazing, something clear that would create something in my mind, but what I get is usually either a lecture or basically just me, a white dude speaking to a camera with curves and drawings popping up sometimes. And this is disappointing. This is not what I was expecting. And it's especially frustrating to me as a scientist, because sometimes my friends come to me and they ask me, what is it that you do for a living? And I can see that they're a bit scared by the question, because most of them have been traumatized a bit by science in high school. They remember the teacher showing them curves and equations that were supposedly the most beautiful or interesting ever, but that they could not understand for their lives. So how do you take science videos out of the high school trauma zone? That's actually what a few fellow students and myself started wondering about five years ago. We wanted to create something new, something that wasn't on YouTube already. We wanted to show something originally both its form and its content. About content, well, when you googled physics, basically everything that you could find was quantum physics or relativity. So we had to go to something different. We decided to go to something closer to people. The physics of liquids, of piles of sand, of liquid crystals. How often do you see that? But we also wanted something original in its form. We wanted to show something visual. We wanted to show vibrant experiments, not cryptic equations. So now you might wonder, OK, but what kind of experiments exactly? And you would be surprised by the number of experiments surrounding you right now. You're in Paris. You're surrounded by physics labs, chemistry labs, biology labs, doing beautiful experiments. Have you ever seen defects, dancing of liquid crystal shells? Have you ever seen, have you ever seen sorry, bounce, bouncing droplets that bounce forever on a bath of oil? Have you ever seen droplets bursting into flower shapes. Neither had we. And we realized at that point, yes, we have something to show, something that people don't know already, something beautiful. But we also realized, wait, we're scientists. Sure, we can find experiments, we can write scripts, we can probably tell a story, but we can't create a captivating video experience for people. So when we realized that, we decided to reach out. We browse our contacts and reached out to artists, graphic designers, composers, filmmakers, and to other scientists to help us writing the scripts. And this way, we assembled a large team of very different people with the same goal, showing science in an original way. And thus was born our YouTube channel, The Lutetium Project, which was named after a chemical element, lutetium, which was itself discovered in Paris and named after Paris, where we work. And then the work began. First for our graphic designer. She created the whole of our visual identity. She made us a movie studio and a logo that's actually inspired by the chemical element lutetium, because it's an L and a U, but also by the crest of the city of Paris, which represents a boat. And at that point, when we had visual identity, our composers also created a musical identity with opening and ending credits. And then we scientists got to work. We had to scout labs, we had to find experiments, to find topics and to think about formats. At the time we could think of two different formats. We first wanted to make videos about general concepts of science, filmed in our movie studio with a lot of experiments and animations, but about topics that you generally haven't heard of. Again, pile of sands, physics of liquids, liquid crystals. And a second kind that we wanted to make was interviews with researchers. Because we wanted to show actual research that's actually happening right now, but also that scientists are not all old white men with gray hair in a lab coat. And I think that at that point, we also realized, well, if we want to be truly accessible to people, we could do something more. So we decided to write and shoot our videos in English, because it's the lingua franca of science in general, with videos that would be published on the Lutetian project, but also in French or native language on Le Projet Lutetium. And with these ideas in mind, 
we went to the labs, we started shooting. And I think that's my favorite part of the whole project. When we went through the labs and through the scripts with our director, Hoon. Because at first I thought, he's a filmmaker. He's probably going to invoke some very abstract rules of cinematography I've never heard of to correct us, to tell us what to do exactly. That happened a bit, of course. But mostly, what he brought was something that was out of our world. Actually, when we went to the lab, as scientists, we had very precise ideas as to how to shoot an experiment. We knew that the best efficient way to get data was to shoot it from that angle, from the top, and to have a beautiful center view. But then, Hoon would come around and say, hmm, you know, yeah, sure, the view from the microscope is nice. But it would be interesting to have that view from the side, so that you could see the bubbles in the pipe. Or, wait, can I actually film you pressing that button? And in the end, he ended up designing whole sequences with frantic cuts of us pouring liquids, pressing switches like he was directing an action movie. What he brought to the team was not just being a filmmaker, he actually brought his cinematographer's eyes next to our scientist's eyes to get idea that we would never have had without him. Basically, we provided beautiful visuals, but he made them into gorgeous videos. And that gave us ideas. We thought, yes, okay, we have those two formats, but maybe we could make something more. We could create something truly new, something that has never been seen before on YouTube. And we decided to, to choose the most gorgeous experiments we had, and to edit some, some contemplative sequences out of them, a few minutes long, mute videos. And then we decided to send these videos to one of our composers, Julien. And now I remember how amazing it was to send the first videos to them, to him, rather. Because Julien works as a composer, but he composes for video formats in general. So he got asked to compose music for car commercials, insurance company ads countless times. But here there was something new to him as well. Physical phenomena filmed in a contemplative way in short videos. He hadn't never seen that before. And it was so exciting to see his reactions to those videos. Because when we saw a droplet bursting, he heard a melody that, a melody that intensified. When we saw droplets that bounce, he heard repeating notes over time. What he brought what his musician's ears, next to the cinematographer's eyes and to the scientist's eyes. And this created a truly balanced synergy of our minds. And actually, this is what created the videos that our viewers like the most, and also my personal favorite, that I want to show you. But before I do that, I want to tell you about the experiment that's behind it, because it has a fun story. It began a few years ago, when a researcher working in Paris went to South America and he happened to bake there. And when he baked, he used some local food coloring. And then he looked at the doll and saw something that he did not expect at all. The droplets burst into flower shapes. So he quickly grabbed a piece of paper and boom, captured the phenomenon somewhere by absorbing it. And when he came back to Paris, he pinned that to a wall in the lab and said, I don't understand what's happening there. So if any of you wants to go have a look, to have a look at that, feel free to do it. And actually, two students started looking into it a few years ago. They had to work hard, but in the end, they realized that what you need to reproduce the experiment is three very simple ingredients, water, alcohol, and sunflower oil. And here's our take on this very simple experiment.
This is the kind of video that you can only achieve by bringing different people together. Scientists, composers, graphic designers, filmmakers. And only then can you realize this balance between science and the arts. And actually, an interesting thing to us was that many viewers came to us and told us that they watched the video for its artistic value, but then proceeded to ask questions about the science. These people are not the typical audience of science videos. Usually, they probably think that science videos are too dull, too technical, or just not for them. But here, they came, and they got interested. They came for the arts, and they stayed for the science. And I think there's a lesson there. If you want to take your, your field to a broad audience, whatever it is, if you want to do outreach, in other words, I think you should strive to collaborate with people different from you, with different skills, different sensibilities, so that you can actually create something truly unique. And only then can you stop people like me from saying utterly unreasonable things, like, I hate science videos on YouTube. Thank you. <laughs>